Alrighty, A2A Cessna 172 landings. Let's talk landings. Um, I believe AI traffic may have turned back on. Yes, it did. Alright, so I took care of that. Now, we're here on the downwind. We're going to be doing a landing at St. Augustine. This is going to cover normal landings. I'm going to do this one first so we can talk procedures. Okay, now during the descent and approach, we've already had the aircraft set up so that we don't have to touch very much during the landing. Now, I've reset the weather so that we have calm winds and we can do a normal landing without any worry about that. So we'll do normal landing first to show you what you should do. Alrighty, so we'll be landing runway 31. As we fly the downwind, we want to maintain at least about a mile from the runway and maintain altitude a thousand feet above the field. Use trim to help you. 2200 to 2100 RPM is a good power setting for downwind. Alright, now I'm not using default ATC right now, but uh, a good rule of thumb if you want to know when to start your descent on the downwind leg is when default ATC tells you you're cleared to land. When that happens, you will be a beam to threshold. Alrighty, so we're pretty much a beam to threshold now. And we've climbed a little bit. But that's okay. So we're going to set power to 1500 RPM. Pitch the nose down a little bit, right about there, and set flaps 10, but make sure you're below 110 knots before you do so. Below 110, flaps 10. Now, as we descend here, we'll descend through 700 feet. I'm going to pause the sim right there. So, it's really hard to see where you're at on the pattern relative to the runway in flight sim. So you sort of have to develop little memograms and memory items to do. At 700 feet, what you can do, I'm going to pause it, but you can do this without pausing, is see where you are relative to the runway. Threshold is right there. We can start our turn to base leg now. All right, so right there. 700 feet is a good altitude. Now you want to use at least no more than 30 degrees bank in the pattern. You can do more than standard rate if you want, but... 30 degrees bank when you're in a pattern, no more. You want to keep descending as you go. See, I've leveled off a little bit here. And you want to slow down. Ideally, you won't touch your power. And you'll just use pitch to maintain your airspeed. See, you're not on base leg very long. I'm going to set flaps to 20. We'll start pitching for 75 when you're on base leg. But now we're off base leg, turning on the final. So I'm going to start pitching for 65 knots. Oh, look at that. That's one of my best pattern turns in a flight sim. We're right on the glide slope, and we're pretty much aligned with the runway. At this point, we'll want to use... We may have to start playing with the power again here, but uh, we want to use pitch to maintain airspeed. We're on the back side of the power curve, so pitch is your airspeed and power is your altitude. I'm a little fast, so I pitch up to get back to 65 knots. All right. Notice my flaps are not full yet. Full flaps for normal landings, okay? Slow pitch down. Don't set the flaps to full until the field is made. I'm going to pause the sim. When I mean field made, I mean if you lost your engine, could you land on the runway? You see here, we're over a swamp right now. So if we lost our engine now, and we may be in the swamp, so we'll wait. All right, we're too low, so we'll increase power. All right, the field is made. The field is made at this point. If we lost our engine now with full flaps, we could glide to land on the field. That does not mean we will make the runway. When I say field made, I mean we could land on the field somewhere, even if it's not the runway. If it's a taxiway or the grass off to the side of the runway, all of that's better than landing in the swamp. So flaps full. Be prepared for an increase in drag when you do that. Increase in lift, too, all right? Too slow, pitch down. All right, we're coming up on 50 feet, 40 feet. At 20 feet, it's right about there. So I'm going to start bringing the power out as we come over the runway and start pitching up. 
This is called the round out. Look down the runway. You see, if you look close to the runway, on the runway, close to where you are, it's a little bit harder. So what I recommend doing is looking down towards the end of the runway. It gets a little bit easier to do. Now see, I touched down on all threes there. Ideally, you want to touch down on the mains first with the stall horn. Alright, quick trick. I want to show you what full braking looks like. Full braking in the, in the Cessna is flaps up, hold the brakes down, and full back pressure on the yoke. That's full braking in the Cessna 172. So again, flaps up will transfer weight off of the wings to the wheels, which increases your braking efficiency. Full wheel brakes, just hold the trigger on your joystick or the period key on your keyboard, assuming you hadn't rebound them. And that's full wheel braking. Now aerodynamic braking is bringing the yoke back. That will stop the aircraft a lot quicker than just wheel brakes alone. Alrighty, so that was a normal landing. Not the best one in the world, but you get the gist. I want to talk a little bit, set the parking brake so we don't roll off, talk a little bit about common mistakes. Flaring too late or too early. If you flare too early, the plane will get too slow, too high above the runway, and you're probably setting yourself up for smacking the airplane down on the runway hard. Flaring too late and the aircraft will touch down on all threes or at worst case touch down on the nose wheel first. That's bad. You're risking a prop strike and you could damage the nose wheel. So it takes practice to achieve master throw skill when it comes to flaring. Another common mistake is flaring too hard. Ideally you want to be a nice smooth. And notice when you come in you're going to be pitching down at about 50 feet above the runway or about a hangar's height usually you want to start rounding out where you pull the th you gently and smoothly start pulling the yoke back and pulling the power out that way you transition from a descent into a nice gentle landing that's how it's supposed to happen it's almost it almost never happens that way but it takes practice to do it now another thing is flaring too hard i almost did it this time. Flaring too hard, pulling back too much, will cause the airplane to balloon. In other words, climb a little bit as it's close to the runway. What you want to do if that happens, if you do nothing and just start a descent back down, you're already slow and now you're going to be descending faster. Again, you're going to hit the runway hard. So if you do balloon, which is, again, if you flare and then the airplane starts to climb again, then what you want to do is increase the power a little bit, hold hold the climb attitude, increase the power just a little bit, and then slowly bring the power back out to idle. And that will give that will re give you a, a nice landing. Trust me, it, it it's better to hit the ground if you balloon and you do that, then you'll be better than ballooning and doing nothing at all. And again, it's better to land on the airport than in the swamp. So that's the normal landing onto the short field. All right, here we are. Coming in. I'm going to have the power set at 2100 RPM throughout the pattern this time to keep me slower. Normally you use 2200 RPM. Pretty close. All right. Power out. Flaps ten. Start pitching to slow the airplane down, and don't. You want you don't want to descend quite as much during a short field approach. Give yourself enough altitude, because remember you got an obstacle to clear. All righty. There's 80 knots, so now we want to pitch to maintain 80 knots and keep the power at 1500, unlike I just did. All right, we'll turn base now. Davis traffic, Cessna, November 906, Charlie Sierra is on base, runway 36. As we turn base, start slowing her down to 70 knots. Again, maintain power and use pitch for your airspeed. 
Now I'm going to sling right on past base here. I'm not going to separate them. That's because I was close to the runway on downwind, so I want to go ahead and turn in. Make sure uh, I'm... Yeah, okay. I'm off the... Uh, a little off. Alrighty. Going for 70 knots here. Stops 20, give us some power because we're getting low. Alright, for now I'm going to do 65 knots, but you need to be at 62 knots for your short field approach. I'm going to use 65 right now because I'm still a little low. Alright. Flaps are full. Unlike with a normal landing, you don't set flaps full once you have the field made. You want to do it early because you need the descent rate. You need the drag on your side. Alright, we're at a good height here. Maintain 62 knots. We're clear of the obstacle. Nice. Flaps up. Give it full braking. Look how much of the runway we ate up just flaring. But I didn't float. I didn't float. I didn't balloon. And that's what you're looking for. It was a bit of a fast, bit of a hard touchdown, but that's good. You don't want soft touchdowns on short field ops. Alrighty, we'll just exit the runway to the right here and head for the hangars. Davis traffic, Cessna, November 906, Charlie Sierra is clear of the runway. Alright, that is short field landings. Alright, soft field landings. We're on approach to Hilliards Air Park at Hilliard, Florida. This is a soft field. This is where we did the uh, soft field takeoff. Now, coming into these soft fields, which are like dirt strips or sod or turf airfields, um, you want to inspect the runway before you land. How do you do that when you're in the air? We're going to fly over the runway, do a flyby first. So we're going to come over the airfield as if we were landing. So I'll set us up. I like to do this at flaps 10. And that's the only setting of flaps we're going to have. And that's just so we can fly slowly over the airfield and not stall and crash. Now, you see this big blue and white building with the big radio tower next to it? That's Jacksonville Center. Can you believe that? That is Jacksonville Air Route Traffic Control Center. It's just off of the airfield here at Hilliard Air Park. So we're going to be flying directly over them. Now, a bit of a scenery bug with my scenery here at uh, Hilliard Air Park. The ultimate terrain roads are showing through, so we'll have to you know, worry about that. So we're coming in. We're at 80 knots right now. I'm going to slow the airplane down. I'm going to bring the power out. Again, we're not landing. Well, what we want to do is just get an idea of the runway. And flying over it like this can also give you an idea of what the winds are like. So what we're going to do, come in just like we always had. Now, we're going to fly just above the runway without landing. So we want to we see what the runway condition is like. Aside from that plane taking off there, I thought I disabled my AI traffic. Ultimate Terrain keeps turning itself back on whenever I reset things, so I rem I'll turn that back off. In fact, I'll do that right now. Alright, so traffic shouldn't be a worry anymore. Alright, we'll climb out at VX.
All right, pitch for VY. Flaps up. So now we can treat this just like a normal traffic pattern. We'll turn left. All right, so we're going to do a soft field landing, runway 18 at Hilliard Air Park. All right, so our runway inspection is good. The runway looks safe to land on. Soft field landings, you treat them a lot like a normal landing, really. You want to keep, you want to treat it sort of like a cross between short field and normal. In other words, you use the same airspeed and flap settings as a short field approach. But you treat it more like a normal landing in the sense you don't have to touch down within 200 feet of a point and you don't have to worry about an obstacle. Again, that's why I chose runway 18. There's no obstacle to worry about. Alrighty. Okay, so just like normal, this is power 1500, pitch down. Set the flaps 10. Now, again, treat it like short field as far as airspeed is concerned. Approach at 62 knots. So we're going to want to pitch for 80 knots right now. Okay, coming up on 700 feet. I'll start my base turn. Start pitching for 70 knots. Set flaps 20. Alrighty, that radio antenna at Hill at uh, Jack Center may be an issue. I'm going to give us a little bit of power. Alrighty, we're clear of that antenna now. So I'm going to turn final. We're going to have to we're going to be offset from the final. It's going to be a little bit wonky, so we're going to have to adjust. But I did that because of that radio antenna. Alrighty, so here we are. We'll be landing this time. Set flaps full. Okay, when we touch down, we're going to bring the flaps up. We're going to fly at 62 knots. When it comes to a soft field landing, you want as soft a touchdown as possible. And you really want to try to touch down without the nose gear touching down at all. And you want to keep just a little bit of power in there for the landing. Alright, coming in at 62 knots. It's a little easier because you ain't got an obstacle to worry about. Short field landings are a little tougher. All right, a little low for that tree there. All right, bring the power out, wings level, let the speed bleed off, start pitching as we descend. Full back pressure, flaps up. Keep the nose wheel off as long as possible. The nose wheels touch down. Give it some power. Give it some power for taxi. Keep the nose wheel up. Full back pressure the entire time. All right, we're slow enough. We can turn off the runway now. Again, soft field. Don't use brakes unless you have to. I'm going to bring the power to idle. Just let the friction of the grass slow you down. All right, and we'll taxi back over there. We'll park in a hang near a hangar. And that is a soft field landing, and that was a pretty good one, even if I do say so myself. So again, as you come over the runway, you want to uh, bring the throttle out and just sort of level off over the runway. You may need to let some speed bleed off. That's where you do it. But we might hit that tetrahedron. I'll turn this way a bit.
We'll park at these hangars right here. And once you touch down, you want to bring the flaps up and keep full back pressure on the elevator. That will keep the weight off of the nose wheel like it should be. And uh, just as you slow down, you're going to have to give it power because you don't want to come to a stop. You want to be able to clear the runway. So give it a little bit of power just to keep the plane going. And also, a little bit of power will give you more elevator effectiveness. The air coming off of the propeller will be effective. I'm going to use the brakes just a little bit here to stop us. Alrighty. That was a soft field landing. Next up uh, will be crosswind. Alright, A2A Cessna 172 tutorial landings video. Now we're picking this part up just off of the descent video, so we're going to be doing the crosswind landing here. Now, this is at the end of the landing video, but uh, we'll apply, again, just like takeoffs, you apply your crosswinds technique to any landing you're doing. So this is going to be a normal landing for the sake of simplicity, and we're going to have roughly a 90 degree crosswind. Actually, we may have slight tailwind while we do this. Uh, for some reason, the wind actually favors that small runway there, but we, uh, we're going to use the bigger runway because that's what they cleared us for. We could have requested a runway. I don't know why we didn't, but so. We're here on the downwind, and when we uh, a little trick I like to use in flight sim to remembering where you are in the pattern is it's a lot harder in flight sim to fly a good traffic pattern because of the view especially if you have only a one monitor like I do uh, so a good rule of thumb is when ATC default ATC will always clear you to land when you are a beam the numbers when you're flying the downwind so that's a good rule to remember when to start your descent. When you are cleared to land, that's when you start your descent on the traffic pattern. So we'll walk through the traffic pattern already in the normal landing. So we're going to be doing more of the crosswind stuff here. Now as you descend on the traffic pattern, you want to do your normal crosswind corrections while airborne. So here we go. All right, we're maintaining traffic pattern altitude of 1,100, 2,200 RPM. Off. Yeah, I'm going to give it some power to get us in the air because I'm really low. Alright, turning on the final pitch for 65. All right, again, we have a pretty much a 90 degree crosswind. Now we're crabbed into the wind. There's 65 knots. On a windy day, um, I'm going to do a flaps 20 landing. Uh, the windier and gustier it is, you may want to use less flaps. It's easier to fly with less flaps in windy conditions. All right, so you can see we're not aligned with the runway. Our course is, but our heading is not. We're crabbed into the wind. We don't want to land like this because we could sideload the landing gear struts and we may shear them off. So we want to, right before we touch down, move the nose wheel to go down the center line of the runway. And the way we do that is we rudder to the left. In this case, we'll rudder to align the runway and then bank to keep our crosswind correction in. Alrighty, so here we go. Rudder in, bank in. The airplane's going to be a little squirrely. Don't be afraid of that. It's going to be. It's a crosswind landing. You're going to be dancing with the plane to do this correctly. That's how it's done, right there. And I even had the stall horn on that landing, too. And as we slow down, we'll put our full crosswind correction in. I forgot to show the steering, the uh, yoke, but this is basically what I'm doing now that we've slowed down. All 
Alrighty, now I did that landing with flaps 20. It's easier to control the airplane with less flaps in windy conditions. Alrighty, I'm going to conclude this as part of the takeoff video. Switch to ground control, but don't tell tell them anything. We'll stop just on the other side of the uh, hold short line. Flaps up. Mixture out. Lights off. Window open if you want. And that's your cleanup checklist. So real quick, we'll run through the after landing checks. Flaps up. Strobes, pitot heat off. Landing taxi light off as required. Mixture lean for ground ops, transponder, squawk, standby, or on in this case. Trim set for takeoff. So your after landing flow, once you've stopped on the other side of the whole short line, is mixture, fla is flaps, mixture, lights, pitot heat, ready and radios. So we'll come in here, we'll flaps up, mixture out, uh, pitot heat off. Lights off, taxi light on if required, and transponder on, set for the on mode, and radios tuned to ground. So that's pretty much the after landing flow, and that's the entire checklist right there in one flow, basically. Uh, again, transponder to on, not standby. That's a new procedure. So that was the crosswind landing, and that concludes the landings video. Next one will be taxi in, ground, and securing the aircraft. All right. One last thing we need to talk about before we call the landing video it is go arounds. I've set us up for a normal traffic pattern at runway 25 here at Hurlong. Runway 25 is long enough for a normal traffic pattern approach. So here we go. Okay, go arounds. Now you're going to have to go around at some point flying in any airplane. It's just a fact of life. So you need to know what to do. Alright, the go around procedure is pretty simple and it involves cleaning up the aircraft and uh, putting us back in a climb to get us back into the traffic pattern. Alright, so as I make this normal approach I'll talk about it. The go around procedure is when you decide to go around you immediately apply full, flout, full power. Now the go around procedure is done assuming you are at final approach, power set, flaps full. It won't always be that way, but we're, that's what we're going to do today. So when you call go around, you immediately set full power and bring the flaps up to 20 degrees if they weren't already there. Okay, then what you do is you want to pitch up and look for a positive rate of climb on the altimeter, not the VSI. Remember, the VSI does show your rate of climb and all, but it lags. Oh, oh, no. oh well. Alright, we'll just make that our final call. Okay, so here we are. We're low. Here we go. Field's not made yet. Alrighty. Field's made. Flaps full. All right, we see some crazy drunk guy on the runway. Go around. Full power, flaps 20, pitch up. Positive rate of climb, flaps 10. Okay, the last part is above 62 knots. We are above 62 knots, flaps up. You want to make sure you are above 62 knots before bringing the flaps up. Because if you are below 62 and you bring the flaps up, you may not have enough lift. You might fall out of the sky. Alright, we'll go back into the traffic pattern. And that's go around. Now, of course, if you were flying in instrument conditions, 
you would combine the go-around procedure with whatever the uh, missed approach procedure is for the approach you're flying. But that is the go-around procedure on the Cessna 172. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So it's going to take us 14 minutes to descend. At our current ground speed, I have a whiz wheel right here in E6B, but you can do this with a calculator too. I'm going to set the ground speed to the current 92 knots 